Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So this video is one of the more highly awaited videos and so a lot of people have been requesting if I can do a percentage change in percentages and video for QR and I'm sorry that it's taken so long but finally I've gotten around to doing it. So first of all to start off with I think the important idea is percentage change formula really important to know probably one of the only things you can know and there's actually two ways to go about calculating percentage change there's two formulas as such they both are derived from each other uh, well, one is derived from the other. Um, and so one is definitely more of a shortcut, which you guys may have seen me using. Um, but thank you very much to, to those guys of you who actually sent in um, this because I actually wasn't using it originally, but then you guys sent it in and I realised it is much faster. So let's have a look at it. So the original percentage change formula is final minus initial divided by the modulus of the initial. So the modulus sign just means you take the positive. So let's say you go from minus four to minus six, that becomes minus six minus minus four divided by the modulus of the initial. So that's just four times 100. So that just becomes minus two over four times 100, which is minus 50%. Okay, makes sense. So the other version of that, so this is kind of like this simple way of, of doing things, I guess. So if we look at the other version of that, if we take our exact same equation that we've got here. So final minus initial divided by the modulus of the initial. What we can do is we can split it into two separate fractions. So final minus initial div subtracted by the initial divided by the initial. Okay. And if we follow, keep following this down, so initial divided by initial is just one, right? So because final minus initial, final divided by initial minus just one so this is and so in this case the modulus sign doesn't really apply um we don't have to worry about it so then if we're doing the exact same calculation that we did last time so it'd be minus six divided by minus four minus one these cancel so that's a half minus one so it's naught point so it's just going to be naught point five again obviously you can times by 100 to get 50 percent. so you can see on this one i guess you don't get the um the positive or minus idea at least with the last one it would have told you is it a negative change or a positive change but you can kind of work it out if you're going from minus four to minus six um you're decreasing your numbers getting smaller so it has to be negative 50 percent. okay but i really really do like this formula so thank you guys once again for sending it in and i hope you guys find it helpful so you can do it with any number it will work Okay, um, and this is the kind of theory behind it because it's just a derivation of this original formula. Okay, cool. So let's go on to the next bit that's important. It's also important to understand why I've written here appropriate conversion. So what I mean by that is so sometimes it will say like, you know, the data in the table um, includes VAT. When one person purchases something, they don't have to include VAT. What is the price that they um, pay. So with VAT, that'll be 20%. So that means the data on the table is going to be X times 1.2. So when you're trying to, let's say that equaled 500. So when you're trying to work out what the price is without VAT, you'd have to do 500 divided by 1.2, as opposed to 500 divided by like 0.8 or something, right? They give you different values. So it's important to understand what happens in each um, situation and to learn the appropriate conversion. And one of the best ways to do that is, like I said, use X and create the scenario. So in this one, where we said that the table includes, um, I'm just imagining a table here, so the table includes values of, uh, the prices in the table include VAT of 20%, that means that equals the normal price times 20% VAT, so that's times 1.2, so I kind of set up my equation like this. Obviously, you don't have to write it out, but it can be helpful to say in your head, and this is where the practice also comes in, because if you do enough of these, you'll just realise, oh, with VAT questions, it's always like this, or with these kind of questions, it's normally like that, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, it's, you know, there might be the odd question where it's a bit of an exception, but it's important to think about it. Furthermore, for example, if it says, oh, you know, there's a third, you know, um, a farmer plants 30% less seeds, okay, then you have to understand that that is 0.7, um, as opposed to dividing by like 1.3, for example. Okay, so just understanding what you're actually using as your percentages and, and your, as your numbers, the best way, like I said, is see if you can write out an equation that fits um, or think about it in your head. That's definitely the faster way. Okay, so the next thing, so fractions, decimals and percentages, you should be really, really happy to be able to convert between these guys. Okay, so especially one, one of the things I would say is it's really, really important if you can to learn from 1 over 10, to one over one. Obviously you'll know like all the common ones, um, like learn all the subdivisions of them. So one over one is obviously one, but one over two is a half, a third, a quarter, a fifth, a sixth. So you'll know all the common ones, but it'll be a little bit more of the hard ones, like one seventh is 0 0.1428 and so on and so on and so on. Or one eighth is 0 0.125. 
Okay, and if you want to level that up, you want to take it up one step further, try and learn their graduations of them. So obviously, you know what one eighth is, but do you know what three eighths are? Do you know what five eighths are? That kind of idea. Okay, so um, understanding kind of the, the kind of um, individual graduations within each number will allow you to be able to do questions a little bit faster and to be able to recognize numbers a little bit better. Okay, so once again, one of the actual, one of the very few things in QR and in the UK in general that you can actually physically learn, if that makes sense. Okay, um, so yeah, I would say, but definitely learn at least from 1 over 1 to 1 over 10. If you want to extend it, you can even do it to 1 over 12. Um, but yeah, I think that's important. And the other thing that's important is just percentage flipping. So all this means is, so for example, if you have to find, um, I don't know, 8% of 25 that is the same as doing 25% of 8, which is a lot easier because that's just a quarter of 8, which is 2. Okay, so just think about things this way as well. So you can flip the percentage to uh, make your life easier. So this will help. Obviously, you know, you do have a calculator. You can just plug it into the calculator. But um, mental maths can be really a good, a good tool to be able to um, save some valuable seconds. Okay, and the very last point, which is extremely pertinent, is to read the question, right? Often students get things wrong because they just put in the wrong numbers of percentage change or they put the wrong thing as the final value or the wrong thing as the initial value. Um, normally, it will tell you which way around it is, but if it doesn't, um, what, like normally chronologically is the best thing. So, for example, if it asks you how much does the percentage change from this to that, um, from let's say it says from like 1950 to 2000, your initial value is 1950 and then two 2000s and 2000 is the final value. Okay, just a couple of things to think about that. So in that case, let's go on to our very first question. So if you guys would like to take a pause, see if you can have a go at this question and then um, I'll talk you through some of the uh, answers here. Okay. So the table shows the average household waste in kilograms per person per year. Around its 1DP, what is the percentage change in household waste not recycled in 1983 to that not recycled in 2005? Okay, so once again, remember, chronologically, this is your initial value. This is going to be your final value. So percentage change equals, remember, we've got shortcut, final, divided by initial, subtract 1, and then times this whole thing by 100. So that's just going to be... 376 divided by 394 minus 1 times 100. So 376 divided by 394 minus 1, which is negative 0 0.0456 dot 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 dot, and then times this by 100. So you're going to get negative 4.56 dot dot dot. So your answer is going to be a 4.6%. Okay, so not too bad, just kind of easing ourselves in. That's all it is. Okay, so on to the next question. Then. So what discount is offered on the one-time rental of a short board for seven days uh, compared to renting for seven days individually? So once again, you guys can have a go at this. So short board, one day, that's going to be 25 times seven, which is going to be 175. Okay, compared to that's, I guess that's seven lots of one-day rental. Whereas here it says it's 20 pound per day for five plus days. So then 20 times seven is 140. Okay, um, so therefore what discount is offered on this, um, it's simply just going to be 35 over the original amount. So 35 over 175, 35 over 175 equals 20%. Okay, times 100 equals 20%. There is a little bit um, better of a faster way to do it, um, which is why I wanted to show you guys this question. So if you have a look at it, because all of this is given per day, the only difference here is $5 per day. So this is going to be 5 over 25 times 100, which is 20%. So that was definitely the faster way to do it. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So let's go on to the next question then. Okay, so once... So the minimum mass of Gliese 667cc is how much greater than the mass of Earth? Okay, so we want to look at minimum mass. So it says Gliese 667cc has a minimum mass that's four point times the mass of Earth. So if Earth is x, Gliese is 4.5x. Okay, so a lot of people here will just be tempted to put like 450%. But remember, all we have to use is our um, percentage change formula. So it's how much greater than the mass of Earth. So then this becomes the initial value because we're asking how much greater than this is it. This is our final value. So it's just going to be 4.5x over x, subtract 1 
times by 100, so that's just 4.5 minus 1, which is 3.5 times 100, which is 350%. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So it's covered a, um, a fairly wide range of questions there, just trying to give you guys some ideas about how you can use the faster percentage change formula, um, as well as, you know, try and uh, work your way around some of these questions. So this one is definitely um, less of a standard question as such, if that makes sense. Okay. Cool. So, um, as always, thank you so much for all the support. Um, please do keep commenting um, and let me know what you'd like to see. I'll do my best to upload these videos. So, um, yeah, best of luck with all your revision. And I know that over this next upcoming week, I know a lot of people will be sitting their tests. So, um, yeah, please do let me know how you get, how you get on. Just drop me an email, um, put it in the comments, whatever it is. Um, and I would love to hear back from you guys. Okay, 